you did that. Uh, so I'm going to unmute you and we'll chat for a moment. And then if you have a question when Frank gets back, that would be great. Okay. Northern Virginia, are you there? No, you I don't have heard? a question. Did you, did you have a question? No, I don't have a question. You, Hi, here I am. I'm back again. Thank All you. right. Northern Virginia, there you go. Frank. Frank. I don't have a question. Oh, you don't have a question? Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So uh, we do have a question, I think, in the chat. Is there a significance to the $10 million on the uh, for the uh, lien and the bill? Yeah, there is. There's two reasons. One, um, we have a uh, member bond in $10 million credits. And more importantly, the figure of $10 million represents the kind of um, energy that they have uh, raped from you in your life uh, with, without your consent. And uh, rather than coming back to them and issuing a figure of a billion dollars or something else, it is a matter of equality that we reclaim what they have taken from us and denied. And that's the figure of 10 minutes. Okay, great. Thank you, Frank. Uh, another question from the, the uh, chat group. Under maritime canon law, can one ask them where is the contract binding you since maritime means merchant law? Yes, you can ask that. But the problem with contract law is, is um, it's a slippery slope in terms of contract. Uh, the bank, and we're dealing with bank law, has created all kinds of shortcuts for themselves because they are a bank. And they include silence. They include the parents' agreement. And in a number of those contracts, the other thing they've done is created a concept of hierarchy of contracts and the dating of contracts. So they consider the contract by your parents to, because it's the first contract, it becomes the primary contract and every other contract after that becomes subsidiary, no matter even if you come back and say there's a mistake. Uh, so it's a real slippery slope if you want to start arguing on contract. I know people have tried and when they talk about parking tickets and speeding fines, you can certainly um, sometimes uh, argue your way out of that. But really, contract law per se with a bank ultimately is a no-win situation because in their system, the um, signed birth certificate by your parents and often sealed by a drop of your blood as a baby or your footprints as a baby binds you absolutely and nails you. So I, I would steer clear of trying to use contract as an argument in their system. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, next question. Um, let me answer those that are asking about last week's call. <laughs> uh, last week's call, Toxie walk, uh, had locked up, so it just recorded a bunch of dead air. So, yes, it was replaced on TalkShoe with an edited call, which is the full call, so don't be worried that you missed something. Um, there is another question regarding the $10 million. Frank, is it better to say $10 million in silver and gold rather than dollars? Well, one of the things we spoke about tonight um, you're going to see gold return in their system because gold has been used to um, ensnare us, beguile us, and trap us and doom us for hundreds and hundreds of years and civilizations. Gold as a uh, possession of uh, interest is lovely, but gold as a medium of value is an absolute abomination, an absolute abomination. And uh, I would not uh, request for it to be in uh, uh, gold or silver. Um, it's Yes, the, the money may devalue, um, but you can find different currencies. Um, I probably wouldn't put it in euros. Uh, the US dollar is being devalued rapidly. There's plenty of other currencies to put it in. You whip it into US dollars, you can go and transfer it. But I would not. Uh, we certainly should not be asking for things in gold or silver. I'm sorry, but I, I just, 
when you think about how they use gold against us, it, it, it really angers me because it's something where they get us to worship gold and gold is the thing that ultimately dooms us. So I really think we've got to try and get that out there, that gold, underwriting currency, is effectively sealing our fate for another enslavement. And they've done it over and over and over again and about to do it again. Okay, thank you, Frank. Uh, let's see, I have a caller um, with a question. And that is uh, Madi. Hello. Yes, hi, did you have a question? Hi. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yep, yep. Oh, someone was talking uh, while I'm talking. Um, oh, yeah, I have a, a situation. Uh, my nephew has actually has a situation. Uh, he was incarcerated, uh, driving with someone that had marijuana in the car. Is there anything that I can pretty much do for him? Yes, there is. When you um, understand the significance of what we've discussed tonight in terms of an ecclesiastical deed poll being the highest form of deed and in also exposing the fraud of them not performing their, their duties. Now, you've heard of the concept of habeas corpus, which is um, bring the body, yeah? Yes, I heard of that. Okay, mm -hmm. now the origin of bring the body is effectively this. The reason they have three sets of KV trusts, one holding our name, one claiming our flesh, and one claiming our soul, is they want us oh. to be soulless things um, with having no property rights whatsoever. So when someone has no property rights whatsoever, then legally the bank and its uh, militia can effectively hold anyone and claim that it's lawful because technically it is lawful. But once a friend or a relative establishes their position as being competent in the law and mm -hmm. goes forward to represent them, uh, one can uh, demand that their property be returned. Now, there's, so there's two ways to approach this. Either you uh, change your standing and actually stand there as a trustee of a true trust holding real property okay. and knowledge of yeah, and then demand that your property, which is your friend, be returned to you by establishing the relationship, but establishing him as your property, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, because the state has no right to claim it other than through their generalised sense of saying, well, you know, it's thing... You have a higher claim, is what I'm saying. Okay. And you do that. And you're a property holder. Or you try and get them an ecclesiastical deed poll, which is, you know... Uh, which is t tends to be fraught with danger, or prepare for them an ecclesiastical deed poll. Yeah? yeah. Or prepare it. Say that again? Prepare it, well, I should say. Yeah, prepare. Yeah. I'll prepare. Yeah, uh, so what when they come into, the he yeah, come into the hearing, you've already presented yours to the clerk prior to the matter because you can lodge documents before you go to court, as you know. And then when you go to the court, say, oh, you know, uh, I seek, as a, as a you know, friend of the court, I seek uh, leave of the court so that my friend may complete his ecclesiastical deed poll witnessed by the court. Now, of course, they'll freak out, yeah? The judge will say, I'm not going to have any of that in, in, the, in the court. That, that's that, no. And then you say, well, <coughs> Your Honour, I seek leave of the court then for an appeal on a matter of law that you are not permitting this man a fair defence and, and to establish his standing. Now, the judge then thinks, hold on a second, hold on a second, he's about to, um, uh, he's already told me that anything I do here is going to be appealed, I'm going to be out of pocket. Do I really want to go down this road? And the judge will probably say, okay, look, case dismissed. So do you understand what I've just said? Hopefully, yeah. So I hope that um, answers your questions. Yeah. Is it is it possible that I can get some more? Because um, uh, one of my uh, friends, closest friend, let me know about your call. 
Is it yes. possible that I can get more materials to um, prepare me? Because I've been doing this stuff for a while, but um, I mean, it's not hard for me to catch on and do it because it's not sure. nothing. It's not. It's nothing real new to me. I'm. I'm. I kind of been in this type of studying already. So, right. well, a few well, Okay. What I'd say is, and I'm sorry to, I, I seem like I'm jumping in, jumping in there, but if I can just say this as a, as a final follow-up to your question. Okay. There's a huge amount of information there already, and, and I've made a promise to everyone, and it's a promise that will follow through, that the tools are there. But as to the one-to-one time and the additional time, I hope you understand that it, it's not a matter that I don't want to help but I'm absolutely limited to what I can do and what others can do directly okay. other than you taking time. I'm, I, I'm, I'm sorry for that, but okay. the best I can do is to do these Q&As to give you honest answers to your specific issues, okay. to direct you to, to read uh, and know that, that when, this is not about sort of one size fits all. I gave okay. some specific examples there for you. So maybe listen back to the call, have mm-hmm. a look at positive law, have a look at what an ecclesiastical deed poll does, have a look at the follow-up documents that come onto the websites. And if okay. after all of that you're unsatisfied, please, I always welcome calls, uh, not calls, but emails to, to, to help. So thank you and One I hope more. those things answer. Yeah. Thank you. One more thing. Can I ask you, when you say claim of property, how can you uh, you dropped out there, but I think how could you um, I was, yeah go how could you uh for instance, you were saying that I can claim um uh, my nephew as my property, how can I actually just say do I put it in record, put it in notes and writing, saying that this is my property, or how do you go about well, doing it, it? well you it, it's an argument of law in the court I mean once you establish that you're a property holder and there is property there that has kinship by blood, then one can argue that something that is of your blood is your property because the court must recognise you're a property holder. It's an argument of law. Effectively, when you go to court without establishing an ecclesiastical deed poll, you have no rights, none. Okay. Okay. Once you establish you have rights, then the court is there to protect your rights. Yeah? Okay. Okay. Right. And then it's a matter of claiming. I know it's a living being, but to the court, it's the same as if someone took your stereo. Yeah? Mm-hmm. That's literally what you're saying. Hey, you took my stereo, give it back. Okay. And it's not using a UCC. You don't have to use the UCC or nothing no, like that. No, no, Well, you, yes, you, yes, as a property holder, yes, you can use UCC, but I'm just giving you the argument. The argument okay. is... Okay. Yeah, Okay. Yeah, it's your blood. Yeah. Okay. I understand. All right. Thank you. No, no, thank you. Good on you. Uh, okay, thank you, Frank. Um, we do have uh, Darlene, 99. Did you have a question? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can. Um, where is the ecclesiastical deep hole step example or located in your website? Article 133, under positive law, on one one heavenorg Okay. And it is, uh, I'll be even more specific, it is canon number, one sec, it is canon number 1564. Because um, I'm currently in a um, process of, of appeal, dealing with um, Social Security Disability, and I was wondering, could I use the ecclesiastical deep hole steps to fight, you know, my, uh, against the process? Absolutely. Hey, look, look um, I, 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 I'm frustrated in that I, I'm limited by the time to go through a range of areas that become, makes this more relevant to the variety of problems that people face like, for example, foreclosure or someone that is wrongfully imprisoned or someone that is facing a tax matter. But when you read the positive law, understand this. The Sessa KV trusts that are placed 
in, in put in place at the time of birth 